Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we're going to be looking at the topic sulfur and its compounds and our subtopic for today is sulfur oxide. So we're going to look at the preparation of sulfur oxide. Previously we looked at the um, allotropes of sulfur and also some of the properties of sulfur. So we are going to look at how this sulfur oxide is prepared in the lab, the different methods and some of the physical properties of sulfur oxide, and then we'll do a few questions. So sulfur oxide is one of the oxides of sulfur. So we have two oxides of sulfur, that is sulfur oxide and sulfur six oxide. So for sulfur oxide, it's usually found in volcanic areas as a gas or dissolved in water, especially in hot springs that have active volcanoes. An example in Kenya is Olkaria or at, and Hell's Gate. So when you go there, you notice uh, the smell. There's a very pungent smell because of the sulfur oxide gas. And also you notice the hot springs, which are mostly acidic. So other sources of sulfur oxide is the combustion of iron pyrites. We said that iron pyrites is one of the ores of sulfur, and this is usually found in coal. So sulfur dioxide also usually results in various metallurgy and chemical processes. So we will start with the preparation of sulfur oxide. It is usually prepared. Uh, by the reaction of dilute hydrochloric acid or dilute sulfuric acid in, with sodium sulfite. So if you look at the setup, we have the dilute hydrochloric acid in the delivery tube. And then in the round bottomed flask, we have sodium sulfite. And then this mixture is heated. And when the reaction occurs, the gas is passed through concentrated sulfuric acid. The reason why we pass through concentrated sulfuric acid is to dry the gas. And you can see the gas is collected by downward delivery. That tells you that sulfur oxide is heavier than air. So if the reaction is very slow, that's the reason why we warm gently. And then we have also talked about this density of air and the reason why it's collected by a downward delivery. So this is the equation, so sodium sulfite, and note it's sulfite, not sulfate, like it would be normally. It's sodium sulfite plus hydrochloric acid. It's going to form sodium chloride, sulfur oxide, and water. So if you were to look at the ionic equation, it means the hydrogen ions are reacting with sulfate ions to form sulfite, not it to form water and sulfur oxide. So nitric acid is not used in this experiment because it's a very strong oxidizing agent. So it cannot reduce the metal sulfide. So instead of, it's going to oxidize the sulfur oxide produced to sulfuric acid, and then itself is going to be reduced to nitrogen oxide. So you can see the reaction between nitric acid and sulfur oxide forms nitrogen oxide and sulfuric acid. So other ways of preparing sulfur oxide is the reaction of concentrated sulfuric acid with copper. So you can see from the setup, we have the thistle funnel that is uh, bringing in the sulfuric acid. And you can see how it's dipped uh, in the solution completely because you can see it doesn't have a tap. So it needs to be dipped, um, and then there is some copper turnings. So the reaction is is warmed gently so that the reaction can occur. We know how copper turnings are not that reactive. So the gas is passed through concentrated sulfuric acid again to dry the gas, and then you can see it's collected uh, by downward delivery. If you were to prepare that solution of sulfur oxide, it means you have to dissolve it in water. So instead of um, Instead of um, uh, putting this drying uh, tube in the concentrated sulfuric acid, then this part is going to be transferred here, and then you dissolve it in water. You can see we are using a filter funnel. We mentioned about filter funnel when we are talking about ammonia. You know that it increases the surface area for dissolution. 
and it also prevents uh, suck back. So copper tannins are usually covered with concentrated sulfuric acid and the mixture is heated and um, the lead sulfuric acid does not react with copper as the need for concentrated acid. So we also discuss the reactions of concentrated and the lead sulfuric acid later and you'll see this also explanation. So the cold concentrated sulfuric acid does not uh, react with copper. That's the reason why we are warming. So this is the reason why the heat must be there in our reaction. So when the solution becomes hot, the, there is an evolution of sulfur dioxide. And so this is the equation. So copper plus concentrated sulfuric acid forms copper two sulfate, water and sulfur dioxide. So this is the second method. Don't forget the first method we can use either dilute hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid with uh, sodium nitrite. In this case, now we are using concentrated sulfuric acid with copper metal. So the uh, reaction occurs in two stages. We have the oxidation of copper to copper 2 oxide. So when copper reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid, it is oxidized to copper oxide, water, and sulfur oxide. And then copper oxide reacts with the water with the acid to form salt and water and then the overall equation now because there is that intermediate equation you're not going to write the, the intermediates when you're writing our answer it's going to be copper plus sulfuric acid to form, to form copper sulfate plus water plus sulfur oxide another way of producing sulfur oxide is burning sulfur in air so when sulfur is burnt in air it forms sulfur oxide although it's not that suitable um, in preparing a pure sample in the lab because it has other contaminants. Remember the air does not just contain oxygen, it has also other components. So you have like nit nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and also inert gases in the same residue. And also just avoiding the exposure of this gas into the environment so which can cause a very uh, environmental pollution. So this is not such a good method of producing sulfur dioxide. So another method, this is method number four, is the reaction of metal sulfides in air. Remember we formed metal sulfides in the previous lesson when we are reacting metals with sulfur. So if you take those metal sulfides, you, you burn them in air, you form their sulfur dioxides. So that's it. Let's look at one question. The setup below is used to prepare dry sulfur oxide in the lab. Answer the questions that follow. So we have the sodium sulfide and the dilute sulfuric acid in the dropping panel uh, that is passed through concentrated sulfuric acid and collected. Identify the mistake in the setup. The mistake in the setup is going to be the method of collection. So sulfur oxide is collected by downward delivery because it's heavier. The next uh, question is write an equation for the reaction in the setup. So it's the reaction of sodium sulfide plus uh, sulfuric acid is going to form a sodium sulfate. Uh, plus sulfur oxide plus water. So let's put the correct set symbols, then we will see if it's balanced. So this is aqueous, this is aqueous, this is aqueous, this is gaseous, this is liquid. So we have two sodiums both sides, uh, two sulfurs both sides, and um, we have uh, four plus three, seven oxygens. 
and 4 plus 67 oxygens to hydrogen, so it's balanced. So the last question is state how the pollution effects of the gas on the environment can be controlled. So we are going to discuss about control of the sulfur oxide in the <clears throat> in the environment. Uh, first, we usually use scrubbers. These are like basic in nature, since the gas is acidic in nature. So what you do, uh, these scrubbers are usually uh, introduced in the setter such that they are going to react with it uh, to form salt and uh, so that sulfur oxide does not go into the atmosphere. Another way we can prevent this from happening is actually forming a solution of sulfur oxide. That's why we introduce the funnel and water. We allow that uh, sulfur oxide to be dissolved in water. Later on, we are going to discuss further on the scrubbers and the ones that are used, especially in the large scale preparation of sulfuric acid, because sulfur four oxide is one of the gases that is given off into the atmosphere in that process. So this brings us to the end um, of this lesson. So in the next lesson, we are going to be looking at um, sulfur four oxide and some of the chemical properties. Sulfur oxide has very many chemical properties and varied because of its nature. So we are going to look at these properties. So see you in the next lesson.